So the question over here that we're trying to understand, that the Ramam is trying to understand these problem. So thank you, Tavi, for, for selecting this topic, which is the problem of evil. The problem of evil is something that um, we'll have to define the problem of evil. It's the problem exactly. But um, everyone knows this term, problem of evil. Okay. Somebody Ram talks about sort of starting from Chilagimel Perek um, Ches. That's where he starts telling us about the problems of being material. Material means Poshet being embodied, having matter, okay? As opposed to not having a body, which is like the angels who don't have a body. Um, angels are scholem nivdalim, our intellects that are nivdal, that are immaterial. So being material is problematic. That's what Perak Ches tells us, and then Perak Tes, and then Perak Yud, Yud Aleph, and Yud Beis directly deal with explaining what there is to say about the evil in the world. Okay, and Perak Yud Gimel then goes into the purpose of the world, if there is one. And as you can see, these things are even more than loosely related. Um, Perak Yudale, there's also about basically our place, the place of humans vis-a-vis -vis the universe. Okay. Perak Tezvav, not obvious how that fits in. Perak Tezvav is about, well, it's sort of, it's sort of obvious. Perak Tezvav is about what is impossible and what is uh, possible because that determines what God can or cannot do. So like what, if we're trying to figure out why God did what he did, we have to figure out are there any limitations. So that's, I think, roughly what Perak Tesvav is doing there. And then Perak Desayin, and then Baj Prak and Til Chavdale talk about Hashgacha. So again, or Tzadik Araloi, the problem of evil, let's see, let's see how these things are all related, okay? And this is, um, for whatever reason, which I don't know, this is immediately after Maisa Merkava was the beginning of Chayat the Kimmel, that's we studied that a little bit in the summer. And um, uh, in the winter, I think it was. And, um, and after those prakim end, this is now the Rama begins this issue of, of matter and its association with evil, or, its, or maybe I should say matter and its associated evils. Okay, so the problem of evil. What's the problem of evil? The problem of evil is it's a, we call a theodicy. We have to justify God. There's things that God does which seem to us to be. Um, wrong or unjust or cruel okay is that that's the basic problem here can we look at the world and and you know and everyone everyone Ramam says everyone sort of when they're affected from the problem of Eev he has two problem where he goes to the Eev story of Beis and of Gimel and I think it's in Perch of Chabez it's all in the Gimel where he says that there's no individual that um that when he himself is afflicted with suffering, bodily suffering, no one will still have faith in the goodness of God. So this is something that everyone faces on some level or another. The Ramam is not saying everyone's going to be mechayar from Megadif, but it means that there's a question of a deep, a deep understanding of God being good or problems with that concept. Is the question why we feel? like Because we, we, we translate something as, as evil, right. as pain that we associate or is it why is there an objective evil right so that's part that's part of what we have to work out if it's just a feeling then maybe we should transcend that feeling maybe it's a false feeling okay but can we transcend that feeling if we can't transcend that feeling then it might not be an answer to say it's just a feeling if it's uh if it's built into the reality feelings are important too and it, and, and even the Rambam would say that. But so, so in other words, my point in that is something to think about in general. In the Moira, it's true that the Moira is not necessarily like telling you something and then like, oh, okay, had I only known that, everything would have been fine. Was, the teaching, the studying, what the Rambam has to teach us is the process that you must go through. This might be an example of that, that even if it's true that's only a feeling, well, okay, can we transcend that feeling and can someone help us transcend that feeling? Maybe uh, Rabbeinu Moshe Ben And then that's your answer is that here, transcend the feeling. But the answer is not, oh, it's only a feeling. That's, that's a cruel answer. Cruel, that's that itself, is, is callous. 
you have to you have to say why you know okay so now what so make me into a philosopher let's say and then feelings won't matter so that's also something we have to think about I, I mean I'm not I'm not fully I don't know is it just a feeling or is it an objective thing that's sort of what this parak that we're going to start with is a little bit about that and um, and of course it's also against a very important pasuk when well, I say very important pasuk because Ram says in, in the Chalik Gimel parak of Hey chap paragraph number 18 that the whole Taurus Moshe Rabbeinu is, is predicated, it's based on the Deya, that everything Hashem does is purposeful and right and wise. And that's, it says, he says, the Sefer Torah begins and ends with that. It ends with and it ends with that Surah Tom and Paul, like called the of Mishpat. So this is the bookends of the Torah, is that everything God does is, is right and just. Okay, so then the question that, okay, the Torah wants to teach us. The main, the main basis of the Torah, the most important thing that Torah is based on, is that the world is good. So the problem of evil is is not just a problem with God; it's the problem with God. Because, in as much as the main teaching is that things are good, we have to figure out how that can square with our feeling or sense or hunch or something about evil. Okay, so. Now we're in Chelik Gimel Perik Yod. What's I'm doing this Perik? So, like I said, Chelik Ches and Tess talk about mm-hmm. being material. Ches talks about how all of man's um, deficiencies and all deficiencies, whether it's material deficiencies or character deficiencies, follow from the fact that he's material and what you should do about being embodied, how you should deal with the fact that you're a body. Okay? Ram says some very important things in the Chelik Yom that the way to deal with being a body is to be ashamed of it and to avoid, embrace, don't embrace your bodily identity. Okay, that's a Chidush and Gedal. How to deal with the fact that you're a body. Because being a body is a problem in the Rambam. Rambam would prefer, at least the way he presents it in the Chelik Yom Rambam would be very much prefer if we could all be angels. Pure reason. <coughs> Test. Ramam talks about that uh, being embodied is a chatzitza between us and God and makes that we can't perceive God. And that's what it means when it talks about Hashem is behind the chayshech and that's the symbolism of the chayshech Anan Anarafel. That um, the chayshech Anan Anarafel is something within us, okay? Which is just done parenthetically because I get a kick out of these things. Like, in Chayish Chana Rafa, the klipas that every Navi has to, has to break through to perceive God, which is like Mam Shemar Nebuchim, it's the same thing. The Chayish Chana Rafa is something that's in your mind or in your being. You have to transcend in order to reach God. Moshe Rabbeinu walked through the Anon, that means he transcended the fact that he's a body. This is Chilik Gimel, Perak Tes. Okay? That brings us to Perak Yud, which I'm not going to read inside. Maybe we'll see what happens next time. But for now, I want to just summarize this Perak and talk about some things we can think about what's going on over here. Um is like this. The starts off and talks about the Mutakalamin, the Madabrim, and how they think about deficiencies. Okay, head there. Um, but the Ramam is like this. The Ramam says that if we don't have to go into the Madabrim over here. It's a question to me why the Ramam structures the parak around the position of the Madabrim. Because really what the Ramam is going to do in this parak is he's going to say <clears throat> that um, there's a big difference between something that is a positive existent and something which is a lack, a header. Very important difference. And one cannot directly create a header. One can remove light and therefore plunge room into darkness. And in that sense, the Pasuk will say that Hashem is Bayre and Ra, because Hashem will not do something or cause cause something to not be amenable to something, and therefore there will be a Ra, and that's an indirect kind of uh, Asiya. Okay, so therefore, what's the point of this? <coughs> that and now I'm, I'm paragraph number five, that all deficiencies are not something that God does directly. Anything that someone does directly is something that exists, not something that's a lack of existence. Paragraph number six, Dhamma tells us that all evils are relative. All, all evils just means privation. Heder is technical word, privation, lacking something. 
So he says, there's a mishpat, mishpat kol harois hein haderim. All evil is privation. So a person's death. We think death is evil? Yeah, death is merely that the person does not exist. A person's ill means he's lacking health. He's, he's, he doesn't have what he needs. He's poor or he's ignorant. All those are lacks. Okay. But you have to understand this. He says, not everyone understands this. Okay, therefore, fine. Par- paragraph number eight. Therefore, the Rambam says the Rambam that Hashem never directly does rats impossible. Now let's read this line over here. All of God's actions are absolute toiv. All that God does is reality, being. All mitzias is toiv. So anything that God does is what exists. Any problem that you have is because there's something lacking. And that the only way you could say that that's Hashem's pu'ula is the way we said He created matter in the, in the nature that we know it. As is known, there's something I referenced in the Gimel Perches, but Ram talks about in other places that matter is associated with privation. This is a big Aristotelian idea that um, the other knows this concept of hylomorphism. Everything is made up of hyla and morph, matter and form. And But there's a third thing, that's privation, because every matter has one, it has one form, but it could have all the other forms. Matter is never married to one particular form, and that's why the Ram says Magdama. The muscle for matter is Naishis Ish Zoyna, because on the one end, she's married. The Isha is a muscle for the Chaymer always. Chaymer is always married because it always has eight or always has something that defines it, but it's always looking for another um, tzura because it has privation from one thing. In other words, if it's this, it's not that. Okay? If something is a plant, well, it could turn into an animal. If an animal eats it, the animal could turn into whatever when he decomposes and so on and so forth. So everything's always changing, and that's the nature of matter. And in that sense, you could say that God created death because he created, let's say death, for example, because he created matter. And matter always has this privation that's associated with it. Anything that doesn't have matter, because all Ra is privation. So no Ra happens to immaterial things. No Malach undergoes evil. Why is it Toiv? Because it's, it's because Metzias. Now notice, now I've never yet defined what taif means. Okay, and this is something that this is why this is a topic that I always was very confused about. But hopefully we'll make some I think I made some progress on this. Okay. So why is it taif because it's Matthias? So here it sort of does an identification of taif with being. Sort of. Maybe debatable, but there's other places where it's more clear. The book that illuminated the darkness of the world. Okay, interesting expression over there. Why is I'm referencing the book that illuminated the darkness? Notice in this parak he also spoke about darkness, which is synonymous with evil, because So Ra and Chayshik are synonymous, which is Mephorish in the Midrashim. And um, the book that illuminated the world talks about God seeing, another thing about sight, about illumination. And what it says is that God saw that Kalash has been a even the existence of Chaymer as it is. Now what about the fact that Chaymer has that nature? That's also Toiv. So now I'm saying, okay, so you told me that everything that exists is Toiv and the header doesn't exist. But what about the fact that Chaymer is amenable to this? It's also Toiv. Because Chaymer is always changing, but that's the way that the game continues. That's how things go on and on and on. It's because the Chaymer is always changing into new things. By the way, Rameyer is another mayor, uh, or reference here in this prayer, okay? Especially because Ramam doesn't use, has no need to say names in this context. Okay. So Vinay Tov means uh, matter, despite the fact that it's susceptible to all these privations, 
still Taif because that's how the world goes around. That's okay. Good is what God does directly. Evil doesn't come down from above. So, okay, so far clear? So far clear. Two, two things. Number one, you're making this distinction that the quality of header that's inherent in Homer, even though we might perceive that as Ra, because it leads to further Metzias, it's tight. Um, Is that correct or wrong? Um, the qua- that quality that Homer has that's associated with Heder so the quality is, is Taif because the quality is is um, part of an ongoing story right, the cycle the cycle, the cycle, of the cycle is existence. eternal the cycle is ex- right. cy- you know, again there's, a, there's an identification between some sort of identification between Taif and existence and if you look at the bigger picture existence of which any individual is only a part that it goes on forever because you change into one thing, you change into another, your body turns into fertilizer, whatever. So, so now it feels like it's a little circular with the definition of, of Ra being Heather that we started with. Why? Because we started off by anchoring down Ra and saying Ra is the absence of Matthias. Right. And now we're changing that. And now we're saying, no, even this, this is not Ra. This is type. So then what's Ra? Okay, so there's two different things you have to differentiate. We, one thing is to talk about the quality that Homer has, that it's susceptible to change. That quality is taif, because that quality is re- is the quality that serves an ongoing reality, which is cyclical, and mm-hmm. goes from one form to another. But then the very fact that this particular that's thing is dead uh-huh. or sick or impoverished, that's, still a, that's a that's a thing. Yeah. That's, that's that's a reality. Well, whatever. It's something. It's a it's an observation that someone is suffering or someone doesn't. Let's forget about the suffering because I'm not talking about pain. I'm talking about lack. Okay. So why is it that a baby's born and doesn't have what to eat? So says the Rambam, baby doesn't not have what to eat. Stan doesn't have what to eat. Okay, I'm making fun a little bit because I want to bring a question. But see, that's right. I'm talking about that, right? right? So now we have a question. I'm getting to a question. Okay, what, what does this do for us? What does this do for us? What does this Lomdish Knech do for us that Hashem didn't do it? So what? Uh, it, it, the, what, the issue over here is, as we saw, the issue is a theodicy. The issue is we're judging God. We have to judge God. And so what's your opinion about God? Very important question. And, and again, I think the point we started with, it was very good that you raised that question, because I think you have to understand, this question is not merely a question of, you know, what's the truth about God? Everyone has to do this. You have to go through this. You have to go through this process yourself. It's not because everyone has to think about Hashem. Everyone has to say Ashri and say Toi Vashem Everyone has to learn Chomesh and think that's, that's what makes us religious. But how can we think that? So the Rabbah is helping us by telling us this, this splitting here is L'Chaira that uh, Hashem didn't make the evil. It's just a lack of something. What does this do for anyone in terms of his feeling that, that, that God is good, that everything God is good, does, God does good. What does it help the person starving to tell him, ain't the variety of the What does it do? Okay, that's my question. I, this is just my trusha, the first time I always learned this parak, numerous times I learned it, I never understood what's wrong one. And this is what we'll see if we can begin a solution, perhaps end it tonight, but we'll at least make a beginning. Okay, so the question is like this. I have another question. What does Taif mean? Say that. What does Taif mean? What does Taif mean? So there is an illusion here in, the Ramam, in this parak where Ramam seems to say that Taif and, and reality, existence, being, is identical. And that's more explicit in Chelik Yom Perak of Hay. This is in paragraph number 16 from the Mishra Mashtoyer version. But it's towards the end of the parak. It's towards the end of the parak. This parak is very important. It relates to the whole discussion here because... In that paragraph, I'm talking about whether anything Hashem does is purpose can be purposeless, because he's getting to the question of mitzvahs. Do all mitzvahs have to have a purpose? That's the Akdama to Tamiya mitzvahs. So we get back to the question of whether God's actions have to be purposeful and understood, and that of course brings us back to nature. So in that paragraph, Rambam says so he goes back to the question of whether Hashem does things for no reason. 
And this again is in paragraph number eight, uh, 16. I'm sorry, I said 18, paragraph number 16 on top of the page. And he says like this, the only reason people make mistakes is because they think all reality is for themselves. Personally, that's another important thing. We'll get to that at some point. And they don't know the nature of the Chaymer HaShaf HaShalom HaZeh. They don't understand the nature of, of matter, of this world. So they don't understand the nature of matter. In other mm. words, people think that things are wrong in this world. That's because they don't get the way matter works. Okay? And here's the line that we need. They don't understand God's first purpose. What's the main purpose in, in, in existence? You know what this whole thing is about? This whole universe is about? It's bringing into existence anything that can exist. Because existence is undoubtedly a good. Once existence is undoubtedly a good, we start with that premise. Existence is a good. So then to ask uh, then the world has, has goodness inherent to it because the world the universe is, a, is this experiment whatever you want to call it this way of God bringing into being all that can exist and existence is good okay so now we have to say okay what does that mean I'm meaning to say here the Ram seems to be saying that there's some inherent quality to existence that's good Ram knows there's this imminent quality to existence that's good, but we have to ask, what determined that? What determines that existence is good? What does that mean? Just saying existence is existence. What is it? My inspiration doesn't sound like it's inherently creation is good. It seems like there's always a second step. Second step meaning? Like it was right. after creation, or if it was synonymous with creation, then... Very good, right, very good, exactly. Another, if if, if Toiv is just another word for existence, then then it's adding nothing, right? What, what's it adding that it's Toiv? Um, yeah, I mean, it seems like there's some sort of value judgment. Something's good. It's a value judgment. But the Raman is saying that that value judgment automatically attends to anything that exists. Right? That's, that's what it means. He's not saying it's identical. He's not saying that it's synonymous with existence because then what's it adding? So it's certainly adding something to existence. But it's identical with anything that exists. Anything that exists is necessarily toif. There's no such thing, says the Rambam, as existing and not being toif. Okay? That's what Rambam says in Chedekim Bar Chafei, which I want to I wanna suggest what that means. And then we'll bring it back to this parak, and then we'll see another place where I'm talking to my Sebracious and seems to say something different. Uh, that will be a very important passage. So let's let's think about it. If I ask you, what does Toiv mean? Yeah, Shmuel, you want to venture? Uh, um, you want to give me a suggestion? What would you say if I asked you, what does the word Toiv mean? No? We've spoken about this before. Oh, we have. Yeah, that's right. And I told you something about Matthias, I think. But uh, probably influenced by this Rambam. But okay, I think it means poshup shad. And, and, and poshup, if you ask him, what does toiv mean? Toiv is a value judgment. Toiv is a value judgment. Why isn't it just the quality? What's the quality? Well, I'm, I'm not saying what the quality is, but why are you. So which quality? Which quality? No, you have to say what the quality is. Because there's a quality called um, beautiful, there's a quality called useful. There are different qualities. Is, if toiv is a quality, you have to tell me what it is. And which quality it is. What do we mean when we say something is taif? What exactly do we mean? Okay. By the way, I mean, I'm asking a partial lexical word. Lexical, lexicon, the dictionary. What, what does the word mean? What does the word mean in the tire? What does the word mean when people say it's taif? Is, it, is it a relative word? Mm. Yeah. It's relative to what? Relative to my uses? Right, right, right. That's what we'll get to. That's what the other place Ram talks about it, where Ram starts talking about relative things. This is in Chedek Gimel, Perek, called Yud Gimel. Look at that scene. Well, not, not so much relative, but more the same idea, subjective, objective. Right, is type something yeah. that objectively is, right. or is it only experienced subjectively? Meaning, by all chemists... That's a different question. Oh, no, it's two different, two different questions, two different questions, two different questions. One question, you just asked a different question. You just asked, is type an objective reality? Okay? Or is it a subjective experience of something else? 
right? I experience something in a way that, let's say, gives me pleasure, so maybe that's what type means. Um, or is it something objective, such as something that's useful to me? That's object it's objectively useful, even if I, whether I experience it or not. Natural saying, even if that's the case, something could be type for one person and type for another person. Mm -hmm. So we have three definitions of type. Either type means something essential, somehow, but that has to be a quality that's defined. Or it means it's, it's, it's a description of my experience of the thing, non-objective, it's pushed, It's about what I feel, okay? It's my much of a, a feeling thing. Or it's something objective about the thing that perhaps that it's useful or that it furthers some purpose, furthers, furthers my purpose, furthers this purpose, but not that purpose. And then we have to figure what's the metric, what purpose, right? So um, I think it's, I would suggest that it's actually none of those, I think. I think I'm saying it means something else like that. I think it's a judgment. It's a judgment, it's a value judgment of approval. Something of which I approve, it's called taif. So it's relative. So it's subjective. Yeah, it's relative, but it's, it's relative. Right, right, right. No, it's relative. And um, it would be subjective, yeah. Right, but it's not about, it's not relative, it's not about the utility of something. It's not about the utility of something, necessarily. Taif does not mean it's useful for something. Toiv does not mean some inherent quality. Toiv does not mean I enjoy it. Toiv means I approve of it. So how can anything be no? definitive? <laughs> okay, so maybe it's not. So let's get right. That's an important question. It gets back to Bracious. But I want to bring you a riot to this. The Ramam talks about Toiv and Ran, Chilik Alf Perk Bays. Chilik Alf Perk Bays. Where the Ramam says that's about the Chet of Eitz Adas. And then Ram talks Barichos about um, what the hate was and explains that theoretically, what we call Adamishan Kaidama hate, man as pure reason, does not engage in the in the concept of Toivara. Or rather he only engages in the in the kind of thinking called Emerson Shekhar. Um says you don't say the heavens are are round as whatever his examples were, is um, toiv. We say that that's emes, right? Um, we don't say the earth is flat, is ra. We say that's shaker. So emes and shaker are about objective realities. And toiv ra is something that we use for, well, I'm talking about for samis. Without going into that, the point I want to make now is that the Ram starts that parak and he says, you know what that means when, the, when they were told that by eating from the tree they'll be Kelehim? It doesn't mean they'll be like gods, because everyone knows that in Hebrew, Elohim means God, also means judges. And there, as Targum says, Ve'isim Kirav So they gained this faculty of judgment. So they, they, they took on this quality of having this very important, very important in terms of how they rule, run their lives, this important feature of, of humans, which is that they judge things. And to judge things, this is toiv, this is ra. And theoretically, humans could do it, could do without that. They can go through life without judging things as being toiv ra. Emerson Shekhar, again, theoretically, could be sufficient guides for how to uh, act. But in fact, humans are very mired and sunk into this concept of judging things. And that's, and that's a problem or whatever it's a reality that we have to deal with okay so now okay so now i think we have a sense of what type means type means the uh, the approval of a judge what does it mean the approval of a judge let's put it try to be a little more specific about that if you could make this thing not exist would you would you do so okay that's what, what's a, ju a judge rules whether something is type or and therefore whether it should whether in the case of Mufur Samus, it's, it's rather people walk around naked, it's tight that they wear well, clothing, they should wear clothing. So it's making, it's, it's, it's putting you in the position that you make decisions based on your achra, um, determination of whether it's tight So then we have a definition of tight vara. Tight means that determination which will lead to a decision if I was in the position of making a decision, not if I was in the position of making a decision. But when someone walks around and says the world is evil, what he's essentially saying is, I wish, I wish it would be different. If I was God, I would do it differently. Happens to be you're not God. Okay, you're only a judge. You're not, okay, you're not the other element. But 
But the point is that Toi is, is, is something that judges, it's something that, that motivates judges who use their decision of Toi to to, to to make put something into effect. So Toi is that um, state of mind that you determine that you disapprove of something, approve of something is Toi, disapprove of you is right. I think that ideally a mishpat would be as a shaker, right? like did the person commit, did was there a is that this person killed this person or not? Not what the judgment of what killing somebody means. It is did that happen or not? Right. No, but there are two aspects there. Of course, we have to determine the facts in the case of a murder, let's say. But we also have to determine whether it's wrong to kill. And the, the, the determination that it's wrong to kill, that's not a factual determination. That's a value determination. Okay. How do we know it's wrong to kill? Or what is it? What do we mean when we say it's wrong to kill? Unjust, that's unfair. Something like that, right? And that's a Tevarat kind of um, determination. And what I mean is Tevarat kind of determination, because yes, you said unjust. There are, we could per, we could put it into other categories, um, besides for just saying it's ra. But there is a general kind of we could all those kinds of judgments, whatever they're based on, can be um, can be all considered this one category of Tevarat, whatever the input may be. Okay, so the input might be unjust, input might be this, input might be that, but ultimately it becomes this position that we take on something. Okay, we take positions on things. That's Tavira. Okay, so we take a position on something. So now, the Ramam says existence is undoubtedly Tav. Now, why is that the case? So let's say, what does that mean? That means one cannot take the position that existence, that he disapproves of existence. Well, why not? Why can't the person take the position that he disapproves on existence? Why is that? Why does Ram say that Messias is tied to the suffering? Fair question? Yeah. The Ram says, going back to Chelik Yom of Hay, the Ram says that existence is undoubtedly tied. So now that we have a definition of tied, that tied means um, the position of approval of something, on, 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 on some things. Being okay, so Rama, when he says that existence is a good bodhisattvic, he's saying that one cannot take the position that existence of, of disapproval on existence. Okay, why not? It's too late. Why do you mean too late? No, but why can't he take that position? Why can't he take that position? Because he exists, so what? Oh, because he exists. Well, you understand my question? Whoa, whoa, you're going to suck him. You can catch some suck him. <laughs> what do you mean to say? No, no, I'm not what you're saying. We're trying to understand the Pasuk. Wait, you're, not, you're, not, you're begging the question. We're trying to understand the Pasuk. If God made the decision that this existence is what we have, then it must be how we fall. Because the Pasuk says it was not, and this is the de facto a good, the existence is tied to the goodness. No, no, one second. Again, again, you, you, you just set us back. Like. <laughs> No, I don't know what you're saying. No, no, no. The kasha is. The kasha, we're trying to understand it. It's like this. Um, the Pasuk says the world is taif, right? So now we have a little definition of what taif means. Taif <coughs> means that which what? Who approves of? Now, one second. Oh, okay. So who approves of this? You have an important question. When the, we say the world is taif, does that mean I approve of it? Shnei Burton? Does that mean Tabby Kagan approves of it? Does that mean any sane human should approve of it? Or does that mean God approves of it? I think we have three options, right? Every individual? Any norm, any worked out individual, I guess, or God? Pasuk says God, right? The problem is like this. Now we're going to get to another place where Ram talks about Taiv. Does Taiv, if Taiv is a judgment that humans engage with in, then we have to think about what does it mean to say that God considers something Taiv? See, the whole business of judging things as being Taiv and Ra, humans do that. Does God do that? See the problem? God judges. Hmm? God judged does he do that? In what sense does he do that? Does he do th- does he do this kind of? I think again, I, I I'm trying to get to a, like a very clear cut description. It's always been a very slippery concept, notion, this notion of type. But I think I'm trying to. I think I've nailed it down. It's the notion of approval, and we're all familiar with this, right? The things we approve of, the things we disapprove of. Okay, does does God have that? I don't know. Emotion, feeling. Something exterior from oneself. Right. But how can how could God approve of something if it is 
if it meaning he, how could it be separate from him the approval approval is like I approve of this thing this thing is separate from me I right. approve but how does God like approve something that's it's all one what do you mean Three it's not God it's not God it's not God, it's not God. I mean, when he separated himself yeah. from the thing, from yeah. the, the creation, so this is what I want. Yeah. This is how I want it. I'm good. Approve it. Yeah. Maybe. Question on how far, I apologize Maybe. If I'm repeating something, but how far this definition of value judgment goes. So the muscle, the way we're talking about now, because where who deems something type, does the way that you're defining type mean that I can now make my own judgment and say not type? Ah, very and good. And vice versa. Vice you just you just be having to brace his back, base and gimel. By the way, you can't because base back Aleph says we have to keep type. Comes to his back, base and gimel says ah, this type is also ah. See, this is this is the big this is what's going on in base back, base and gimel because they did they 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 had type vira. Right. Base back Aleph says everything is type. So apparently they didn't. They didn't. Uh, they didn't do. They didn't understand Ve'ar Lekim Kitay properly. This is something which we're going to get to at some point. I don't know if we'll get to it tonight, but it's a very important thing. The Rambam says that when this is a chilek alf prekno dalid, that when Hashem told Moshe, "Ani Avir called Tuvi al Panecha," the big hasog of Moshe Rabbeinu was, "Ani Avir called Tuvi al Panecha." Says the Rambam, that means, what does called Tuvi mean? It means all of reality about which it says Ve'ar Lekim is called Hashem Zavinei Tov Ma'ayit, and Moshe Rabbeinu perceived all of all of reality. That's called kaltuvi. In other words, the highest asaga is to see the world from the lens of a yalikim eskalash asavinetayim night. That's exactly what you were getting at, right? I think that you could yeah. see it. There's God seeing it. Well, we have to think of what does it mean if God sees it. So maybe God approves of it because, in as much as it's, it is something separate from Him, it's not Him, it's something separate from Him. So can He approve it? There's nothing funny, but the question is, does God engage in that kind of thing? Meaning, we engage in that kind of thing. We know you do, but does God? Does God engage in it? What's the problem? Yeah, right. Okay, so Ram talks about it. Right, what is Right, what is it? Okay. Right, right. Well, let's see. Ram talks about that as well. Yeah. Okay, so first I want to just talk about this thing. What does it mean that reality is, is necessarily toiv, really sophic? Okay, what does that mean? So, according to way of understanding it, that means it's impossible. It's not, it's not consistent let's say it's not meaningful it's incoherent to have a position of disapproval on reality why I'm back to my question why um, so you're saying Tavi suggesting that it doesn't mean it's inconsistent for us to have that position it means that God has a position of approval on reality but I don't think that's what it means when he says in Chilak Imper Cafe because that would be begging the question. The Ram over there says that everything God does is for a reason because obviously Matthias is toiv. So Matthias is not toiv because God approves. Rather, God approves because Matthias is toiv. That's what I'm suggesting with Chilakim Per Cafe. Okay? And furthermore, and I think more significantly, and this is a very critical point, we don't care about what God thinks unless we can think as He does. It would be completely meaningless to say unless we're able to to understand that ourselves. Now, that doesn't mean that that's what I was referring to in Chilak Yom There's a logical loophole there. But nonetheless, I think that the Ramam over there is talking about um, what's at the basis of a and that is that we can know that the reality is Tev. And that's because there's this no doubt that Mitzis is a good thing. And this, we have the question, if you ever spoke to a uh, Shiva Bacher, you must have, or whatever, teenager, you know, who says reality is a good thing? A very common question. What do you What's wrong with me? So the Rebbe Bukum says that Matthias is totally suffering. But why? Afshinish. So I think the Rebbe is saying like this, it's incoherent to have the position that reality is, is not good. And the reason why that's incoherent is because having that position, taking a position, is part of Matthias. If you want to really have that position, so you're saying you have a certain muscle, you have a certain idea. And that idea, you're claiming this is a correct idea, it's a real idea. But that idea is also part of existence. Or at least you're judging, you're taking the position is itself, is, is a move within reality. You're participating in Mitzvah by taking a position. So you cannot take a position that 
reality, undifferentiated reality. Now, we're not talking about a specific, we're talking about the, the notion of reality, the notion of existence. You can't take a position that the notion of existence is not good. That's an incoherent position because why are you taking a position? Ah, why are you taking a position? Anyone says, before someone judges something, you want to ask them, well, why are you judging something? You say, because I think there's value to judging. So you say, oh, once you think there's value to judge, otherwise don't judge. It was just, just, you know, keep quiet. And as much as you're thinking about it, that means you believe there's some value in thinking about it. Thinking about it is part of this whole, this whole universal system. So you, you already affirmed, you already affirmed, you already, you already affirmed your conclusion before you even, before you made the decision. But aspects within the system. Right. So maybe aspects, but, but, but existence, qua existence, you just, it. right. We'll give you so, so this, this logic then only applies to meta existence. Yeah. It right. doesn't apply to any sort of specific mitzvahs. Correct. You started with the kid Correct. being hungry and baby dying. Correct. That part I can have an issue with. Right. And it's not existence, qua existence. Right. That's right. So what are we solving? Ah, so now what are we solving? Solving. So here what we're solving is like this, that if the truth is that from the basic undifferentiated notion of existence, everything else follows, then once you have to acknowledge um, the goodness of existence by existing, instead of reaching a state of non-existence and non-thinking or perhaps suicide. But once you're acknowledging the value of existence by, again, by engaging in the whole experience of existence, a big part of which is thinking and judging. So once you're doing that, you are, nece you are, nece you are necessarily taking a stance of approval on the concept of existence and then, once you get to that point, if we can show you how from the one basic idea of existence follows all of the world as we know it, so now we're done. That's now a we're huge jump. <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> I know. I, it's a huge jump. But, um, yeah, okay, so what? I mean, so we started yeah. off with the problem of theodicy. Yeah. So now you're saying because there's a blanket concept of existence that you're not really allowed to judge because the second you try to judge you've already deemed it good you know you're allowed to judge you're, well, you're not you can't you you're can't judge because, you because you can't possibly judge it and come to any other conclusion correct so correct. You're, you're really playing word games with this judgment no it's word games it's yeah because if there's only one possible judgment means i can come down this way or that way but no, you no, 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 no. that my judgment can only be tight because I'm judging. Basically, no, because what I, basically, I, so you could put it in, 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 in to say, into borrow a dirty word, you could say existentialist terms. <laughs> you could say that it's an existential thing. To have you, everyone chooses to judge. I'm saying you don't have to choose. You choose to play the game. That's what I'm saying. You cannot blame anyone but for yourself because you chose to play. Right, but again, by, by, judging. by definition, you're, you're changing the definition of judging. That's what I'm trying to explain. Why? Because judging means there's more than one outcome. And you're saying when you put on the judge's robes, you're committing to one outcome. So it's not a value judgment. It's something else. It is a value judgment. No, you, you did. You, you did. No, you vayar. I'm saying once you did vayar, you already got to the type. Once you looked, you know, the type follows automatically. That's what, that's, that's what I'm saying. Once you look, look because you, because you already so made the determination is relevant. It, it starts from Rotten. I don't know, right? It starts from Rotten. No, it turns out that, that, right, it turns out that really once you have that Rotten, uh, to accept, do something, the you uh, you, yeah, you the, committed to the no no that, that's what that I sidestep or we no, 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 we going back to it. theodicy. Let's, let's yeah. back up for a second. So now yeah. you, you explain that once you look at okay, so now the concept of existence is toyed because you you've decided to look right. Okay, but who says that this form of existence with six million people, you know, getting getting killed in a span of five years? Why is that toyed? Right. Who says that existence has to be yeah, this way? Right. No. So then, I'm saying you're right. not solving theodicy with, with right. This, no. 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 Right, 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 right. No, I'm not. I didn't solve it yet. The net, right. I've so, I, so, I just explained so far the identification of toiv with mitzvahs is that the shvita of toiv, the judging toiv, is a very significant part of mitzvahs. Okay, I just want to. I want to just focus on that for a minute, just to point out some interesting things. What I'm saying is that the vayar lekim is not. You don't look at that as like outside of creation. That's actually a very important part of creation. That again, going back to Perak Bay's, where they're 
offered to be like Kele Kim. The Ram tells us it's not like God, but I don't know if they knew that, whatever. Maybe they thought they were like God, like the Makshin, Paragrades, whatever. But the point is that man can participate in this Vayar Lekim, and that's a very important thing. It's Moshe Rabbeinu participated in the Ebu Yisra Lekim. So that's, it's not something that's external to creation. It's in fact the it's the highest point of creation is Vayar Lekim, and the highest point of creation is man who's with Salam Lekim, and Moshe Rabbeinu, who's Masig, the whole Madrigas Adam, which we'll talk about more in the maybe coming Shurim, he's the one who actually does Vayar Lekim properly, okay? So just to point out some important themes and gracious. Oh, so he does. So if he does, then what? So can our conception of Rabbi Shaker. Can our conception of Rabbi be wrong, you mean? No, can What's your question? If we're saying that the highest level is Emerson Shaker. Right. Why right? should get to Emerson Shaker? It's the okay. right? I guess so, so yeah. Yeah, um, I guess so. It's an interesting question, yeah. Okay, so let's say. Really, everything should be Emerson Shaker for Shaker. Really, should right. be pre anything. From God's perspective, it's all it's not even type of No, but there is a Yalakim though. There is that. It is so, a reality. Yeah, we have to go. We have to figure out what that is. We have to figure out what that is. There's no Ra. Right. There's no Ra. Right. There's no Ra because reality, to be in existence, has to be type. Correct. So you really got rid of the entire concept of Ra. I'm saying it's not right. It's not anything. It's just right. it's existence. Right. 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 No. No. You're not doing anything. One second. Let's get back to theodicy. Now, how does this? How does it solve the 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 the, the, the problem of theodicy? Yeah. Well, it does because. Going back to the point we were saying before, once you signing on for existence, what if existence is undifferentiated? What if this whole business of we look at okay, you know, does it have to be this way or does it have to be that way? What if it's actually one thing? There's one thing called existence, and that's what it is. And part of it is your thinking, and part of it is this, and part of it is that. All those things are all part of existence. Okay. No. Now, what's the problem with that? The problem is, so then, doesn't that mean that order that that when I am choosing to exist or choose to judge the same thing doesn't that mean that i'm choosing something that is inherently to my detriment because um there are things in this in this existing that ha- that are harmful to me they melt it against me that's what clearly based very good is telling us no those things are not part of what when you're when you're judging when you're thinking about existence, you're not taking a stance on on privation because that's something else. So therefore, all of existence is one thing and the all of existence that's one thing is something that you legitimately approve of. So go ahead and do that judgment. Ah, you're going to turn around and say, wait a second, I realized that when I judged the whole thing, I, I was mischarit, I had charata. I had charata in the fact that I existed because if I exist, I get sick. So you say, no, that's not charata in existing. Svedinim. Existing does not mean getting sick. And there's a chef of Metzius from Hashem. And then there's a, a, a goal on how much Metzius is chef. Is chef this much, not that much? So people die, people get sick, people have poverty because he's not, that's not, that's, that's, that's the chef of Max out, whatever. It's not what he gives. But the point is, it has to, in order for there to be consistent re'iyaki taiv, the hainu, consistent judgment on reality that is taiv, okay, <coughs> we need to have two steps. We need to have that the judgment is the commitment and we need to have that it's coherent and that when you judge you're not committing to something and not realizing what you're committing to. Because, oh wait, I didn't realize kids get sick. I didn't realize that people get killed. So no, you did realize that because you that's not be part of the material. Huh? You don't have here to be born. So what? So you're not, I mean, maybe you would have chosen not to. You would have opted so out. Don't, don't touch the cord. Yeah, what? Maybe you would have opted out of this choice. So you're not really judgment. choosing to exist. Not no, you chose to get to the share tonight. I don't care if you were born or not. You chose to get me. You chose to think about this. Hmm. I'm serious. No, I'm serious. In other words, in other, that's my point. That the Torah is talking. That what you have to think about this like this. When the Torah says that the world is tough, it doesn't mean that the guy in a coma. It doesn't, it's a meaningless statement for this guy who's, who's not coming to the share. It's only meaningful once you start thinking about it. So therefore, the Al-Karchach guy, the Al-Karchach guy, he's not making a judgment. Uh, the guy who's born al Karach and feels like that, feels like I don't want to be alive. So he 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 also he also, if he's consistent, should feel that I don't want to take a position on whether I should be alive or not. And even that's not valuable to me. That's a big majority. That guy would be literally lying on the floor, comatose. In which case he's not taking a job. Fine. He's not steered to the Pasik. Because the Pasik is saying the world is tough means anyone who 
takes the time to reflect and has enough of an interest to reflect. And that's what I'm saying before is that you have to understand the reflection is a big part of being human. It's just going to clean the guy. It's not, it's, not word, it's not a trick over here. This is a very important part of being human. It's such an important part that some people think that the snake was telling them that this is, you'll be like God because you will do this, whatever. At least saying you'll be judged at something. He's offering them something. This is a big part of being human, this judging. Again, the, you see what I'm saying? The guy who's judging and his conclusion is, I don't want to be alive. If he was consistent, he would say, I also don't want to judge. But he doesn't. He's going to look around saying God is evil. So he has a gishmak. He's a little for because he's not, he's not working himself out. You, if we're God is evil, so why does he give you this gishmak of, of complaining? Well, this is what, is what to work with. So go to the therapist and the therapist will talk and bring him out slowly. He'll tell him, look, you're nice. <clears throat> I might see, you know, you're a person, you have your own opinions, this is a and yes, people suffer, and something they have to work through, okay? There's, there's this hope. There's hope. Calls him out, the guy's doing that. And what I'm saying is, and that's an important thing, because what that means is, he's still engaged with Matthias. He's engaged with Matthias. It's a good thing for a person to be in a situation where their judgment about the reality is forced to be That's an interesting thing. So, yeah, can, can there be a person who's I mean, forced to judge? What? No, I mean, I want... I want to judge, I want to evaluate whether or not you are in a position that you're forced to take the, the end result of your judgment is that you're forced into the fact that it seems to be. Oh, you're saying that's the case? I want to think about that. To me, that sounds like an evil thing. Like, ah, no, but you're not forced because everyone could choose whether to engage. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's the existentialist reading right here. If I engage, I'm forced. But you're not forced to engage. Right, so no, it turns out that the judgment, right, it turns out that the judgment starts from someplace prior to the judgment, right? It starts from like a Rutzen thing or something, right? It starts from your personal Rutzen, which, yeah, I, I have to think, you have to think about that. You think about that. That's what we think about. See, it's not really a judgment then. You're taking away the judgment element. Yeah. I don't know. Shaychad, Shahuchad. It's from Shaychad. Saying whatever by judging you already. Yeah, I have to think about that. Okay, I want to show you my mock about this. Take a look at Chilik Bey's Perek. If you have a Chilik Bey's, Chilik Bey's Perek Lam, just another place in the Rambam. Um, identifies Toiv as having something to do with Matthias. The other Rambam, by the way, talks about Moid as well. Helic Beis Perek Lam Bezuram talks about Masa Bereshis. And he's talking about why it doesn't, this is in paragraph number 12, he's talking about why it doesn't say Kitoiv on the second day. Um, and this is on top page 192. In the Mephomashatoi, he says, Ein Mashmoz Kitoiv Elo. Shiesha tell us Gluya Uburura the Kiyuma Shalamatsias Hazu Vimashusa. Something has to have a clear manifest purpose in the ongoing Kiyum of, of Matsias. That's what it means Kitai. So that's just another place where the Ramam is saying number one that Taiv is what contributes to Matsias, and number two, there he stresses more that it's something that is manifest because it's something because um, it's something that has to impress itself upon a viewer. There's no toiv without viewing. Re'ia vayar lekim kitoiv. Re'ia and toiv go together. Okay. So what I'll do is like this. Maybe we'll, we'll maybe we'll spend another five or ten minutes. We'll start with this next question, but maybe we won't get into the answer today. There's another place Ram talks about vayar lekim kitoiv, and this is here the gimel, perik yud gimel. This is a very, very tricky passage. Here the Gimel Paragud Gimel, the Ramam insists that the world doesn't have a purpose in the t- classical sense of doing something in order to accomplish something else, such as making money to be able to have food. <clears throat> so that's not like that with God. God has no needs that he had fulfilled by creating the world. And furthermore, and these two things somehow go together, man is not the purpose of the world. In fact, everything is created for its own sake. Okay, everything is created for its own sake. This is the Ramam Zmarich about. And then he says like this. This is in cha- paragraph number 17.
Um, everything is created in paragraph number 60, Nam's everything is created for the sake of God's will, meaning God wanted it to be, and that's why it is. Okay, whatever that means. In paragraph number 17, Ram says, Again, the Rambam is referencing the same Pesach, and again, the Rambam starts telling us some qualities of the Torah, like he does in our paragraph, he says the Torah illuminates the world, here he says the Torah leads the way to those who want to find the way, because it gives direction. This thing that we're going with this Mahalach, become clear from the Torah. Nothing in Bereshis does it say that it exists for the sake of something else. So, Hashem did this, Hashem did that. But nowhere, nowhere does it say that Hashem did this in order to serve something else. All it says is everything was brought to existence. And that its existence matched the intent. Okay, important idea over here. Hashem brought it to existence. Right? We were talking about before, what does Re'alakim Kitov add? So the Ram says, okay, number one, Hashem brought it to existence. Number two, that its existence comported with a kavana. You know what it means, Re'alakim Kitov? Says the Rambam, seems to be saying that the existence of the thing comported with kavana. Who's kavana? Hashem's kavana. Then Ramam says, You know what I explained to you about You know what means when we say toiv? Something which is matim to our kavana. I built a house to live in, and I, bu- I finished building a house, and it came out the way I, I wanted in order to live in it, so I say it's toiv. So what's what I'm saying over here? When we say toiv, we mean something is matma kavanu So therefore, what? So what's the rule of dibbetar kolash If you look back at chilek aleph per chavav, the rule of dibbetar kolash miniyadam says the Rambam over there is that Torah says things about Hashem that are not accurate in truth, but are the way the Hamayim thinks about Hashem, the way people think. That's the Ramah explains the Bittu Adam. Whatever people can think of Bashkaf Rishayna, that's what's attributed to Hashem. And therefore we attribute to Hashem that He moves, that He comes and then He goes because people consider that a mile to think about Hashem not moving. People think of that as a, as a chasar, even though in fact it's a chasar to move because we only move because we need things. But on the other hand, we don't say Hashem eats, we don't say Hashem touches because, and it touches, I added, it could be the place where Hashem says that, um, because that's obviously by people, in people's minds, simple minds, it's a chasar, even though really motion is just equally chasar. But the Torah talks in human language. Ramam doesn't mean it was different to the Lashon. doesn't stop the Ramam. People before the Ramam did this as well. <coughs> different to the Lashon means the Torah talks in human language, i.e., the Torah is spoken in a way that simple people, humans, who are limited in their thought, the way they think about Hashem, the Torah is going to make that concession. Okay, so now let's plug that in over here. What's Ram telling us over here? What's Ram bringing in different to the Lashon? Different to the Lashon means. Torah will say something about Hashem, but it's actually not true, such as Vayeret Hashem. But people think of Hashem that way, so we'll say Vayeret Hashem. Okay. So what does that mean over here? People think of Hashem as approving. But He doesn't approve. That's what that's that's what the Bittar Kolash means. This is such a mysterious passage. Wait, why is your conclusion that means that the opposite of that, that it doesn't approve? Because that's what it means when we say it, when we apply it to Yarad Allah and it's of the Bittar Kolash is a way of saying that Torah does not mean what it says. It doesn't mean necessarily. It's not necessarily an antonym. It doesn't mean the opposite. Maybe it the only need to bring in the rule of the Bittar Kolash Adam is when you have a problem with its simple meaning. What is the Rambam's problem with its surface meaning? Yeah, what is the problem with the service meaning such that he has to explain this pasuk 
by calling on the rule of the Adam. Why would God engage in a judgment? Ah, so that I think is the answer. Um, but let's just read on because. So well, at this that, point, the, the, the pronounce, pronouncement of Toyev implies that it could be anything else. Why? How so? It's, it's ascribing some sort of deficiency of God. That's God right. could do something that doesn't meet his purpose. He's trying to, to bake an apple pie and he makes a peach pie. Like, so that, I'm not sure if that's a problem, right? That, I hear that. Well, why isn't that a theological issue with limiting God? No, because I don't know if that's Chavez. So it couldn't have been otherwise. Okay, so what? I don't know if that's a problem. Yeah, I hear. You're asking a question. Like, what does it add? Like, yeah, Hashem did it because he wanted to do it. Like, what's the... Um, right. It's almost like... It, and it came out right. What's the... Side that it, what, it couldn't right. be otherwise. Our right. conception of the Kodesh Baruch Hu could right. not possibly right. occur any other way. Right, right, right. So I'm not sure if that's... I'm not... That's definitely a real issue. I don't know if that's it's a part of the grammar. But let's just finish up because... I'm going to finish this paragraph because... So here the problem, This line suggests that... You know what Taiv means? Something that we care about. Right? That's what Taif means. Does God care about things in the same way? No. But we do. So, Hashem will talk about Hashem from the human perspective. Oh, we care about Taif, so probably Hashem does well. That's what it seems. That's what this line would suggest. But then the Rabbim says, And that means, of course, his kavana. So he's not saying that the Pusik, the surface meaning of the Pusik is that everything in the world is something that we would approve of. He's not saying that because he says it's it's going to Hashem's kavan. And he explains what ma'id means. He says explicitly at the end over here, Okay? So here the Rambam sounds like he's saying that the definition of Taif is something that meets a certain purpose. And that the world is Taif because it meets God's purpose. Not that, like he says in the Chelek that the world is Taif because existence is Taif and that's why Hashem created the world, right? Very important question. Is the world good because Hashem chose to make the world and, and it meets its purposes and that's called Taif? That's what this would suggest over here. Besides that problem to kill Hashem the other. Or is the world Taif because Mitzis is Taif and God made the world because God did Taif? Seems to be a contradiction, but even when you obey here in Bakud Gimel, why is our armor being in the Torah Kolash Adam? It's Taiv because it's Matim. Well, why can't they be Hashem's Kavon? Why can't I be How so? Uh, the, well, those things don't seem to contradict. It can, it can be, it can have, both, it can have both features. How so? How could it have both features? Right. Okay. But right. But what makes it Taiv? No, it could have both features. True. But in the Chelik Gimel, Bakud Gimel, this paragraph they're reading, it's Mashma that it's Taiv because there was a plan that God executed, and since He executed in a way that was faithful to the plan. So it's tough because it's faithful. Same way I would say something is tough because I have a need to have nutrition and I got my food, so I say it's tough. So God had this need, which was an inexplicable need to create the world, and he created it in a way that he wanted to, so it's tough. But then the tough is starting from the second step. Given that God wanted to create the world and he created it such that in the way that he wanted to, so it meet, it meet, it, it, it meet God, it met God's plan, God's will. So that's what makes it tough. So it's tough in a relative sense because it's it matches what he wanted. But in the Chedekim Per Cafe, it's much more that it's, it's toiv in an absolute sense. The reality itself is toiv inherent. But it's okay? toiv in absolute and also in yes. need. Yes, yes. But the question is, what does the Yalakim Kitoi mean? Which one does the Yalakim Kitoi mean? Uh, what, which right. one would you refer to? Right, that? right, right. <coughs> exactly. So I want to I just, I want to just, let's, I'm going to give you two more minutes. Let me just tell you briefly where I, where I want to go with this. And but the, again, we have this important question within which I encourage you to think about if you have any ideas, which is what, is, I didn't see in the first we talk about this. What does the Raman want? The Chari is saying, you know, Taiv means something that meets your Kavana. So met God's Kavana. What's the problem? So I think the Vart is like this. The Vart is that the whole Taiv judgment that we were describing till now, it's not possible for God. The whole business of approval and, and disapproval is not something that God does. Because why do I approve of existence? Because I exist. That's why. That's why I approve of existence. Be see, that's what I was saying before. What does it mean existence is type? It means that if you're talking to me, if you're here today, then if you showed up to, to read this 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 pasuk, then you're you obviously agree to it, right? Meaning you're, you're participating. Once you participate in existence, you are necessarily um, approving of it. 
God, does God participate in existence? He does not. Says Rama Mechil Kalaf Perak Vav that when we talk about God's existence and our existence, that's that's a homonym. That's a word that's it's an equivocal term. It's the word Motzu. It's Beshit of Hashem Gomor. Says the Rama, because God is of an, a fundamentally different than us. Doesn't even exist in the same way we do. Okay, so this is what I'll, I'll leave you with this. This is where I think with that Chelikim and Pekadikim was going. That since Vayalikim Kitoiv is based on Metsias, but it's based on, you need two Metsuyim to have this Vayalikim Kitoiv. You need something that's Motsui and something that's doing the judgment. But since the thing that's doing the judgment is part of the same Metsias, so identify with it. That's all what Taiv means. Taiv means it's me. Because Taiv means it's me. So the opposite of what you were saying before, that you're saying that the world is not God. That's the problem. Mimela, if God would be a human being, then Vayalakim Kitoiv would make perfect sense because I like the world, you like the world, and God also likes the world. Wow! But the problem, but that, that Debitar Kalashmiyon. Debitar Kalashmiyon means to so talking about Hashem as if He's also part of this whole business of Matthias, and therefore He's also He's also a participant, He's also a player. And a player is a, is a, is a, is a Vayalakim Kitoiv. That's what it means to be a player. But Hashem is not a player in the world. He's the only thing that's not. So now we have to figure out what does Vayalakim Kitoiv actually mean. One second, right. What it, what it actually means, what does it actually mean? Okay, now we're up to that question. What does it actually mean? But this is what the Ramam has to say, Debatari Kalashim Right, that's what you're asking, what's Kaltuvi? Okay, so what does it actually mean? Because well, that's like that. The Ramam is telling us that the Torah is talking Kalashim Neodam, because Kalashim Neodam, what Kalashim Neodam means, Torah talks about Hashem as if he's a human. That's what Kalashim Neodam means. Because that's what humans think about Hashem. They think about Hashem as if the most perfect human. Okay. So if Hashem would be a human, then he'd be Reiki Taiv. Why is that interesting to us? Because that tells us that we should be Reiki Taiv, let's say. Okay, but well, what does the Pasuk actually mean, right? What is it actually telling us? Let's say, Vayir at Hashem, talking about Hashem as a human being and for whatever purposes, but it actually has a real meaning. So what does Vayalakim Kitaiv actually mean? Um, and as this get back to the Ramam, what he's saying over here, something about Hashem. Come on, this we will leave for next time. Okay, so let me just summarize what we did today. Um, Yes, again, to, to repeat myself, unlike usual, unlike which is the usual case, I'm not sure I, I, that I got the Ramam right over here. Maybe I could be I just took a whole wrong turn. It's possible on this whole Indian. But, but to summarize what, what, what has been discussed, um, the Ramam is saying that nature, reality is toiv, philosophic, reality is toiv, philosophic, I'm suggesting, means that one cannot help but approve of reality there's no there's no option there's no option except for opting out for the whole for the whole re'ia okay and in that sense re'ia becomes a very fundamental aspect of of, of being and that tells us something we have to explore further about Vayalik and Kitev and about the Chet Eitzadas and the Tev and Ra Okay, that Riyah, and, and then Moshe Rabbein is Riyah of, of uh, Reisa Sachai Rai, which is an Yavik called Tugat um, Manecha. So in that sense, Metziah and Tev go together. What the Ram is doing in Perich Perich Beis Perich Yod is saying that in, in a true in a true level, Metziah is a one unit of Tev, and the Rois are not part of Metziah. So therefore, that's a legitimate. It's a trick being played on the person in a certain sense. You get to that problem. The Shmuel was raising, but Lemaisa, once you commit to it you could rest assured that you're not being inconsistent. Once you think, don't think that you're inherently contradictory because you're going to get upset when someone's dying because you should know that that's not what you were thinking about in a deep way. Okay, that's back the base back yud. And uh, what we discussed at the end was that because real kim kitoy, because we kitoyv, actually means that I, like the thing I am judging, am a matzoy, that's why it's really something that humans do and doesn't, God does not do. And then what is going on in real kim kitoyv that will leave to its turn next time and explore that for it. Okay. All right. So it comes out from this Mahalach that 